I'm Romy Cordier, Romy Cordier Design. We are here in iconic Palm Springs, California at my mid-century home. This home was previously a long-term rental and as of about two months ago, I reclaimed it for myself as a weekend retreat and also as a showcase for my original oil paintings. Behind me we have Butterfly Barbara and she is the inspiration for the mural that I'm going to show you how to do today. And the home will be open for Palm Springs Modernism Week in 2014. So I invite you to come join us and see the original paintings that I have for sale and also come take a look at this great mural we're gonna do on the wall right over there. This is the wall that we're gonna do the mural on today. The wall has already been prepped for the mural. I actually did a white primer on everything first, a beautiful pale green, then I took the gray from the front door, diluted it with water, and actually went, took a sponge up and down, back and forth about three different times. So you'll see there's very subtle drips and there's a beautiful subtle modeling on the wall. The reason I wanted this background to look like this is because the rest of the house is painted this beautiful ice blue color here. The ice blue is kind of my gallery sheet color that lets all of the paintings kind of pop out. So with this wall here, I wanted to have continuity. And then the way I prepped this for our shoot today um, was something called an opaque projector, which is an artist's best kept secret. You can rent those at any art supply store. And you take that, you take an image that you've maybe taken from the internet or one of your favorite images, and you put it in the projector and you project it on the wall, and you take a pencil and you trace all the lines and get the, the guidelines for your mural or your painting. You can even do this on canvas too. And then um, I've also got a, a little passion flower down here in the corner. But uh, the hard part will be actually painting the mural, but we'll show you that in a second. So I think I should get changed and we'll get started. So, step number one, we're going to take this Sharpie and we're going to outline the entire mural wherever I've drawn lines so we don't lose them when we paint. Isn't this fun? Haven't you always wanted to draw on the wall? Okay, we got them all done. Now, check out this art cart here. So, what I've done is I went to the hardware store and I bought a bunch of little sample paints. I chose bright primary colors and secondary colors and I'm not sure which of these colors I'm gonna use yet, but I've got all these great printouts of colorful butterflies from the internet, and I'm just gonna start picking and choosing and laying on the color of these butterflies, and uh, we'll see where it goes. So this is house paint, and the house paint is fairly thick. So what I'm gonna do is actually dilute it with a little bit of water, because I want these uh, butterflies a little bit more sheer. I don't want it super opaque, which means I'm gonna have to do a little, a little bit of blending. It's nice to mix it up really, really well too to make sure it holds. But I want this paint a little bit sheer. And I want to see those black lines coming through that I've drawn on the wall and stuff as well. Yeah, that's nice. You can see how it runs on the side of the container there. So let's sample this up there on the wall and see if I've done this right. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Perfect consistency. And if the paint runs, it's okay because uh, what I've done earlier when I did the background for this was I actually chose paint diluted with water as well so that I kind of get this very flowy, runny kind of look. It doesn't have to be uh, too pristine and too perfect. I want a little transparency in these wings. That's why I diluted it with water. And eventually we will have some drips off of the butterflies before we finish too. So the reason I, I watered down the paint was because I want to make sure the magic marker shows through. Um, if I put the paint on too thick, I might lose these design lines that I've created here. And uh, the cool thing about this magic marker is it gives me a place to start and, uh, and to work from. And then what I can do later on if I want is go over it with black paint. But for now, it gives us a great guideline to work with. And you can see how beautifully this paint brush is on here. Very sheer because it's diluted with water. Because it's house paint, we'll have durability. We'll be able to wash it down later on. So as some of you may know, I actually own a hair salon in Larchmont Village. And one of my clients is Sharon Lawrence. She's been an amazing client for so many years. And she was off doing a film, I believe, in Atlanta. And she had brought back some spectacular photographs 
of um, these monarch butterflies and they were flying over this um, area of passion flowers and I was so taken by the photographs that she had taken that um, I asked her if she would send me a couple and she did and they are the inspiration for this passion flower that I'm doing right now. So thank you Sharon, we appreciate your inspiration. So to create a little tonal heel on this butterfly, what I did is I went back and uh, I took, I'm taking some hot pink and actually going over the orange butterfly while it's still a little bit wet and while the brush is actually wet with the other paint and just brushing in some line work here to give a little bit more, uh, a little more movement in the butterfly and give a little bit more color that way it's not so opaque and flat. So in, in, in previous murals I've done, I actually do use a lot of technique that is, I don't want to say gimmicky, but it's a little bit more simple. This is a little bit more artistic. This is, it's up to you, the user. There's no right or wrong way. When it comes to blending color and layering color together like this, it's whatever your heart's desire, whatever comes off the paintbrush, it's, uh, it's what makes it art. And sometimes, you know, art takes you someplace. You, you have an idea for where you're going to go with it, but until you start blending these paints and putting them down, you don't know where it's really going to go. So this is definitely a bit of a work of art as opposed to a, a cookie cutter sort of mural that you put down some tape and you've got yourself a grid or something specific like that. So you know the first recorded history of the butterfly in art is in 1350 BC in Egypt. It was actually in a tomb painting of Nebamun hunting in the marshes of the Nile River. In the Renaissance, we have Jupiter painting butterflies, Mercury, and Virtue by Italian artist Doso Dosi in about 1522. Pre-Raphaelite Dante Rossetti gave his Venus Verticordia in 1864 in which butterflies serve as a dormant in a woman's silky flowing hair. In 1956, we have surrealist artist Salvador Dali's untitled painting referred to as Landscape with Butterflies. In 1969, Peter Max gave us a technicolor butterfly with morphine faces that beautifully represent the psychedelic 1960s. Taking butterflies to an entirely new level is Damien Hirst's 2006 piece, I Am Become Death, Shatterer of Worlds. It's over 7 feet tall and 17 and a half feet long. It's made from over 9,000 actual butterfly wings resting in gloss red household paint. One of my favorite newcomers to the art world is Los Angeles based artist Sage Vaughn who paints colorful butterflies in bleak cityscapes. In recent years, butterflies have burst into the scene in a plethora of ways. They now adorn almost every imaginable household item from fine dinner china to textiles used for everything from clothes to towels to upholstery. They even make plastic butterflies that you can attach to walls as wall art. In this ever-changing, fast-paced digital age, we need things that are both familiar and comforting. What could be more freeing and exhilarating than to watch a butterfly flit and float through a field of flowers on a sunny spring day? It's rebirth and renewal at its finest. So now what I'm going to do is take some of the house paint that I've used for the butterflies, dilute it with water so it's very drippy, and I'm going to go back and do drips from the butterflies and just add another layer of texture to this. I'm going to use different colors, but I'll start with one color and just kind of work my way through the, through the mural and just let these guys go and do their thing. Okay, so that's the last of the drips. The beautiful thing about this drip system is totally up to you. Start, stop, when you want, make as much of it or as little of it as you want. House paint, dilute it with water, put your brush in there, put it to the wall and let it go. Hope you have fun. So this is our finished room. It came together really beautiful. I'm so happy with how it turned out. The butterflies are a great counterbalance to all the original artwork in here. And the salon will be a pop-up gallery for Palm Springs Modernism Weekend 2014. And I just want to say thank you to you, the viewers, and to all the artists who came before. Art begets art. Go have fun, go create. I'm Romy Cordier, designing better living. <laughs>